Hello and welcome. If you're like me, you like to do research before you buy a product. Um, in May, I went to my first summer track day with the C5 Corvette and real quick found out that the cooling system in the car is insufficient for the temperatures that I see at least here in California. The options you have when it comes to buying a radiator are essentially eBay radiators for 150 or something bucks, um, the Engineer Cooling Products radiator for around 350 bucks, the Wits radiators coming in around seven, 800 bucks, Ron Davis cave, excuse me, radiators that come in $900 as a track spec radiator around $700, and when it comes to a product that's like just a welded together piece of aluminum with generally the same size and specs among all those except for the eBay ones um, you have to wonder if spending the extra essentially double the price is worth it so I finally have my results from installing my radiator and taking it to the track and they're good so today I was at Thunder Hill um, I didn't stay the whole day because it was really hot and I have a fresh tattoo and I'm not supposed to sweat with it and frankly it felt like it was on fire in the sun so um, the peak temperatures that I saw were around 86, 87 degrees outside just ambient temperature um, but pushing the car as hard as I did I was able to um, not overheat but I got warning lights on the transmission so if it's not one thing it's another um, so it's not like I ran the car in like a hundred degree weather like I had intended but the results are more than adequate for what it is so I want to put in some footage from today um, I use HP tuners I have the MPVI 3 um, when you plug that into the OBD in the car and you sync it up to uh, Track Addict, the app, you can set up the app in the car, record the race, but it also records data like engine coolant temperature, transmission temperature, um, ambient air temperature. Um, the only thing that sucks it doesn't record is oil temperature. Um, I have a gauge for that but it's weird that the car reads it but doesn't like share the data if you will via the OBD port. So getting right to it this would be Thunder Hill 5 mile in May the temperature outside was about 90 degrees at this time and this is coming right out of the paddock coolant temperature is sitting at 207 So this is going to be right after finishing the first lap, which is, keep in mind, 5 miles. We're looking at temperatures already approaching 230 degrees. This is the third lap. Uh, this is where we start to peak my temperatures. I was getting pretty excited chasing this white C8. And uh, you'll see that the temperatures come up to 240, 245. So at some point after this is when I realized how hot my balloon was, so I had to back off. Three minutes, 38.9 seconds. Now fast forwarding to August, we have a new radiator. The hills are no longer green. The weather is set to be hot again. got a new camera to play with. So 
so this is the start of the second session. One thing that's interesting, you'll notice the car has really high intake temperatures. That would be heat soak. And when your temperature's that high, it pulls a lot of timing. What was interesting is the next day I went to the autocross and saw a guy spraying down his Viper with a little water spray bottle, spraying the intake air bridge. And he was saying how when he starts his lap, his car is pulling a lot of timing because of all the heat. So now that I have my own data, I understand what he means by that. So once we get moving, you'll notice the intake air temperatures drop pretty rapidly. So now we're on lap five. Thunder Hill West is a two mile track. And the temperatures are hanging around 220, which is totally acceptable. Having a good old time chasing this Miata. Now we'll cut to. Uh, my final session of the day. So right off the bat, we have real high intake air temperatures, but the coolant temperature is 203. And after six laps, these are my temperatures. Uh, we're getting in for the final session of my day. And as a bonus, I'm going to include the footage when my trans tip uh, warning light came on. I remember I was chasing this spec Miata, and honestly, he probably should have let me by. Um, but it was an open track day, open passing, and really the rules are for advanced drivers. I'm not willing to risk my car trying to just get in front of somebody. So right there is when I noticed the warning light. No more. And if you're wondering how this radiator performs on the street, Here's an example of 98 degrees outside. My coolant is sitting right at the thermostat opening temperature. So in conclusion, was the ECP radiator sufficient for my needs? Absolutely yes. At half the cost of the other radiators on the market, it was a no-brainer. And I have no regrets at this point. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Subscribe, like the video and enjoy some 360 cam footage of the track day at Thunder Hill.